ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. You can even listen on your iPhone if you go to AmericanFreedomRadio.com, download the app. We have uh, apps for Android as well, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, people are able to now have the uh, the little USB ports in your car, so you can plug your iPhone into that, tune in American Freedom Radio um, with the app, and you can listen to AmericanFreedomRadio.com and the Vinnie Eastwood Show while you're driving around live. How about them apples? My very special guest, Andy Bashago, uh, going to be running for uh, President of the United States. So, so um, Andy, are you going to be uh, running for as an independent or an interdimensional? Actually, both, Vinny. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm going to be petitioning to get on every state ballot in all the 50 states, and I'm going to talk about my interdimensional experiences. I'm not an interdimensional. I'm actually just an ethnic kid from Morris Plains, New Jersey. But along the way, I've had some interesting life experiences, and I think to the extent that I was time traveling to the United States government and people as a child, I think in maturity, I think I'm certainly qualified to be chief executive. But I'm not going to pull any punches. I'm going to talk openly about my time travel experiences so that I can use my presidential campaign as a vehicle for bringing this information forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not I'm not going to well, I'm going to be discussing an entire platform, but I'm going to make U.S. leadership in declassifying, declassifying and deploying our secret teleportation capability as as the the leading piece of my new energy platform. So, getting back to what we were talking about before, you wanted to wrap up a um, an Al Gore anecdote of yourself. Yeah, I mean, just just to put this in perspective, Al Gore in 1970 was sitting in Roger Ravel's class at Harvard College when Ravel was trying to inculcate the next generation with concern about what was then called the greenhouse effect, which today we would call global warming, climate change, what have you. Andrew Marshall had already written his secret report for the Pentagon indicating that enough uh, global warming could pitch us into the coming global superstorm of Strieber and Bell, basically a scenario where there would be so much melting that we might have a new ice age. Now, the last ice age, the, the, the glaciers came down to the southern Kansas border on the continental United States. Imagine the destruction that would be done during that reglaciation to countries like, well, the Scandinavian countries, the United Kingdom, Russia, China, Japan, the North Canada, the Northern United States. It would be devastating because that's where a lot of our our technical and uh, academic resources are based in cities like New York, London, Tokyo, Beijing, Moscow, uh, Stockholm. Um, so that was it was very significant that that be undertaken. But the point I make is, look, Al Gore went on to become one of the most prominent statesmen of his generation in the United States. He reached the vice presidency. And then after the vice presidency, when he launched his international crusade regarding global warming, he was a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize and an Academy Award and even a Grammy. I mean, he became a celebrated figure in his generation. But the truth of the situation, I'm not faulting Al Gore, but, but the, the reality of the situation is at the time that he was first being educated about the greenhouse effect at Harvard, what was secretly emerging in America's atomic research labs was the principal technology to reverse global warming. Why do I say that teleportation is the most significant environmental cause of our time? In other words, declassifying and deploying teleportation is so important to the environmental movement and our environmental concerns. Well, 60% of greenhouse gases come from transportation. If we could introduce Tesla teleportation first between major world cities, using them to replace commercial airliners, and then begin filling in the rest of our transportation grid with teleportation, so you can go not just go from Sydney to Auckland in 10 seconds rather than 24 hours, but you can literally go from your home to the grocery store via teleportation, essentially obviating the need for the internal combustion engine. 
Well, whatever. the internal combustion engine has been obsolete for a very long time. There's, there's currently no need for it, but the uh, main principle behind its uh, continued existence in manufacture, I believe, is because the Rockefellers own uh, a large chunk of the oil cartels and they don't want their, their uh, people's dependence on them to disappear. Right, and, and we are either going to break that lock on, on the energy paradigm or we're going to have a catastrophe. Well, speaking so of just, which, speaking of which, if teleportation is an advanced technology, how much energy does it use to teleport a um, an object from one point to another? Because we've we've seen um, in the movies how they'd have like a big generator or, or or whatever, or half a city would go dark in order to use these uh, devices in secret underground labs or whatever. Is it like that? Are, are they are they currently very energy thirsty? They're very energy efficient. So just. To, for, for example, this small uh, Tesla teleporter that we were using to get from New Jersey to New Mexico when I was a child on the project, which was basically two elliptical-shaped armatures that were about eight feet high and about 10 feet apart from each other on the shop floor. The left armature was attached to a control console that a single technician sat at and operated a rudimentary computer-like screen with a keyboard. The boom on the right, the armature on the right, was attached to a cord in the wall that was about the size of an industrial power cord that you would need to operate a smaller piece of industrial equipment. I'm talking about something like an industrial lathe or an industrial drill press. Now, I'm not uh, an electrical engineer in the manner of my late father, nor am I a physicist. But what I'm saying is that we were jumping through there and getting 2,005 miles west to Santa Fe, New Mexico, sometimes with an adjustment in weeks, months, or years in terms of our arrival. So the energy inputs of teleportation versus conventional means of transport are several orders of magnitude more cost-effective and less fuelish than our existing energy paradigm. And, and that's why I'm calling well, and, and perhaps if we were to use some uh, other classified, uh, quote-unquote, free energy devices to fuel these, we would not only reduce travel time to zero, but energy consumption to zero. And then if everybody's got something of that nature, that would be really, really good for the economy. I mean, imagine the amount of uh, people who get stuck in traffic for an hour or two every morning. Instead of that, they can they can spend that time uh, doing something else, or, or even at work, continuing to work even more. Right. There's there's a misconception about um, what's called the ephemeralization of technology, which is basically the capacity of technology to do more with less, fewer inputs, basically of time, energy, and material. In fact, every time you essentially modernize your technical infrastructure in that way and maximize human freedom and convenience, you actually create wealth. Because I think you just basically provided a stellar example of this. There's nothing productive about sitting in a traffic jam for two hours. It wastes time, it causes stress, and it has negative health effects. For example, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, and so forth. So in fact, and, and also when, when new technology is introduced, if it is cosmically efficient, in other words, if it meets the cosmic efficiency test, it also meets economic efficiency uh, test. So for example, when you can produce a good or a service less expensively, you can sell more of it and make more money in economic terms if they're defined financially, when cosmically you're doing more with less. So in fact, we would prosper as a civilization if we made the transition to the new energy paradigm. We wouldn't, for every job that would be replaced, we would be creating jobs. So for example, let's say the transportation and the shipping infrastructure. If we introduced teleportation for the shipping of goods, you wouldn't, yes, you would have 16 wheel truck drivers losing their jobs, but where would they be working? Where would they move? They would be operating the teleports to ship goods and there'd be more of them at those depots because with less costs, fewer transaction costs of shipping the same gram of product, you'd be shipping more product because it would be cheaper and hence you could employ more people. So the path to new energy will actually be a net job creator. So what I'm going to be calling for when I run for president of the United States in 2012 is let's make teleportation the sort of the, the gem in the crown of our new energy infrastructure. And then let's do everything to find the ways and to cap, you know, to, to, uh, 
to, to, to solidify and bring into view and perfect all the ways that we can derive energy for free to drive the teleporter. So it won't even any longer be a question of where you're going to plug the teleporter in. You're going to be generating that free energy with the other applications that we know have emerged, but have not only been suppressed, but there's been situations we believe where some of the progenitors of these new energy technologies, uh, like Dr. Stanley Meyer, have apparently been assassinated in order for these new energy uh, technologies uh, to be suppressed. And so we need leadership at the top level to bring about the new energy paradigm that has already emerged technically, but which now needs to be introduced socially with, I believe, teleportation as sort of the central feature of that new economy, that, that new energy infrastructure. Mm. And I think parenting as a uh, as an occupation would change. I mean, how the hell are you going to ground the kids if they can instantly teleport to the other side of the country to go hang out with their mates? You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're gonna... well, oh, oh no, we're coming, we're coming up to break. That's not a question I need you to answer because it's just stupid. I'm sorry. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, you listen to the Video Eastwood Show broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. My very special guest is Andrew Bashago. Bashago like Chicago on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And like I said, you can download the iPhone and Android apps so you can listen to it basically wherever you would like to. And join us in the chat room at the Show.com, And we'll see you all right after the break, ladies and gentlemen. Come back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com five days a week, ladies and gentlemen. Next week is Thanksgiving, and uh, I'll be taking uh, that week after Thanksgiving off, and I'm going to have a um, a bunch of, uh, well, the best of in the last couple of months. Frack, you just having a look at the audio archives, it's like, man, we've had a lot of good shows in the last in the last month alone. Um, so to uh, scroll through them and try and pick out um, the best of the best week for you, I can I can assure you you're gonna be wanting to listen to that even if even if it ain't live, um, even if you've heard the shows before because there's so many things about uh, talking to the people that we do on this program that don't sink in right away. Kind of like watching a really intellectual movie and when you watch it the second time you see so much more and there's a lot more dimension to it. You know what I'm saying? Andy Bushago is my guest one of these very people who um, you should be listening to again and again uh, to try and soak up this story and the the reality of it because basically if you think you know what's going on that's when you know that you haven't got anything figured out properly that's my that's my perspective uh, the wise the wisest person is the one who realizes how dumb he truly is essentially Andy, welcome back. Good to be back, Vinny. Now, what were we talking about before we came over from the uh, the last break there? Uh, oh, I was talking about the fact that when I run for president, that the centerpiece of my new energy uh, platform is going to be uh, declassification and deployment globally in an international program of technology transfer by the United States government of the secret Tesla-based Vortal teleportation technology that it's concealed within the inner uh, uh, realm realms of the U.S. government for at least 45 years because I'm 51 and it was at age six that I first teleported with my late father uh, from New Jersey to New Mexico uh, around the time that DARPA's Project Pegasus was being launched and. Um, you know, in, in, in biological and anthropological uh, and social terms, a human generation is 20 years. That's around the time that people can leave their parents' household and, and get married and have children themselves. So um, we've had a multi-generational cover-up of an incredibly valuable technology that we could have been using to get, for example, between major world cities in seconds around 1970. There's been a 42-year cover-up if we were to date the operationalization of the technology to 1970. And that's simply unacceptable. And that's the principal reason I'm speaking out about the time travel program. I'm not endorsing the notion that the mass public should be able to 
access mass timelines, you know, with mass time travel, because that would result in mass chaos. But I am calling for the introduction of Tesla teleportation in, for real-time transport, because there's no longer any need for us to be, uh, you know, strapping 4,000 pounds of metal around our waist and driving down the street. These are antiquated technologies. We are stuck in the 70s, you know, so you, when you go into a family restaurant in the United States, you hear James, a James Taylor song on the on the Muzak, right, at, at, a, at a Denny's or something. Well, we're also stuck in the 1970s in terms of our transportation infrastructure. All they've done is make the cars a little smaller and a little more futuristic looking. We're still dealing with the same outmoded internal combustion technology. So to that extent, Mr. Gore was right in his book, Earth in the Balance, when he made that statement. It was very true. But we can't just bemoan the fact that climate change is upon us. We need a response. Every historical challenge requires responses. And it's my conviction that one of the principal responses is the introduction of this secret technology into society at large. It would be very ben beneficial. Hmm. Well, I always um, thought about this phrase, uh, or, what, what, something about the uh, the journey being the uh, the best part, not the destination. With teleportation, it'd be great because you get to cut out the middleman. And the only reason why people are, are uh, really uh, uh, trying to say, "Oh, the journey is what what really counts," and, and getting there or, or whatever, is because they don't have a choice. They're either stuck in traffic and they have to rationalise and, and, and figure out how much better everything could be if uh, this stuff didn't exist. And and here we have it. And I, I've I've um, been a sci-fi fan for a long time, and I had this uh, uh, idea of a uh, a military and a uh, domestic. Uh, application for uh, what I what I called uh, time travel pads, kind of like about the size of a doormat or, or whatever. You step onto it, you uh, uh, tell it which uh, location or which other pad that you want to uh, jump to, and it sends you there. But before it sends you there, it sends a message to that other jump pad. Like let's say, for example, you're going from your house to your uh, your friend's house across the country, and you just wanted to, you know, knock on their door and pay them a visit. So you dial in your your doormat, and then and then uh, their doormat rings, and as soon as they open the door, your um, your doormat goes green, and you go bling straight through. So if they don't want to answer the door or they're not home, it'll just ring for a few seconds like a telephone, and 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 then say no no response, and you can't come. And, and that ensures a security lock um, on it because one of the other uh, things that was uh, concerned uh, to people who I told this idea was uh, what if somebody tr tries to burgle your house using the teleportation technology and I say, well, you've got to have a um, uh, some kind of a, uh, a shield or whatever because imagine, Andy, that there was um, a teleportation pad in a bank vault or something of that nature and how easy it would be for a, um, a high-tech criminal to just go ching grab a whole bunch of stuff and then ching he's out again so it produces a, a whole um, world of uh, legislation that might actually be uh, introduced in order to ensure the safety and the non-criminal use of, of such sophisticated technology much as it's illegal to hit somebody with a car it's illegal to um, you know uh, uh, sabotage somebody's time uh, time uh, or oh, sorry uh, teleportation pad at the house so that it shreds them into a th into a uh, pink mist when it turns on. Well, there's really two issues in that area. If we're talking about how the advent of teleportation secretly over 40 years ago relates to security issues. So let me just address those on the macro level and then on, on the micro level. At the nation state level, there is a national security interest on the part of the major nations that might be invaded via teleportation by, for example, an, an aggressor nation, a terrorist cell, or an organized criminal network to establish a teleportation uh, infrastructure in the same way that, for example, if a policeman is separated from his squad car in the United States, I don't know if it's true in other countries, but a policeman can commandeer a taxi or somebody's private vehicle. So to analogize to the level of teleportation, if, teleport, if, 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 if a significant teleportation infrastructure could be secretly built by a hegemonistic country, by a terror, a terror organization, or by a, a group of organized criminals who would use it, let's say, to commit bank robberies and then teleport away from the scene of the crime, therefore, it's in the national security of all of the major nations 
that would have assets worth invading via teleportation to launch an emergency program to establish a substantial teleportation infrastructure at the nation state level because then they can occupy the field in time space and not be not be taken advantage of by by surprise teleportation from some group of malefactors kind so of like uh, kind of like having a uh, a radio frequency band that you pay for and nobody else is able to broadcast on that frequency? Or like the, the motive that President uh, Dwight David Eisenhower had in the United States after World War II, where he sponsored the legislation to build our interstate highway system so that uh, soldiers and materiel uh, and workers could be rapidly moved, let's say, from the East Coast to the West Coast. In other words, when you have an infrastructure that's greater than your potential adversary, the advantage that you have is to fend a surprise attack. I mean, if there had been big enough, if there had been enough time and big enough uh, guns at the Pearl Harbor, all of the Japanese planes would have been shot out of the sky, right? So to analogize here, because we know that Tesla teleportation was fully operational secretly in the United States government, and we know that the Klaus Fuchs spy ring at a minimum uh, penetrated the Los Alamos National Labs with Soviet spies. And because there's been enough time for teleportation to be developed independently based on the derivation of the same principles and the same devices. In fact, all of the major nations have a, a profound security interest in establishing a teleportation infrastructure yesterday. Okay, so I'm speaking out as a concerned citizen that we occupy, when I say we, that the lawful, law-abiding, non-violent majority of countries and people inside of countries come into possession of teleportation so that we can fend the misuse of this technology by an aggressor nation, terrorist group, or criminal uh, organization. Uh, Andy, Andy, Sir. has this happened before? Have, has a country in possession of time, <coughs> of time travel or teleportation technology used it um, in terms of a military strike or operation against uh, an enemy? No, but non-lethal weapons technology moved from its development by people like Dr. Eldon Bird, who was a, a personal friend of mine, who was warning the world about the fact that psychotronic weapons had been had been uh, gone black. It went from basically his project uh, for the Army and Navy to the CIA and then into rogue elements of the intelligence community and then into organized criminal hands. So we know we know that organized criminals in the United States have been using psychotronic weapons technology against individuals. And I'm analogizing and say, well, wait a minute, teleportation technology could be used in a similar pernicious rogue way. And the only thing to fend ourselves from that would be an in, a teleportation infrastructure that would be larger and more effective that would be in the hands of the government. Because the government is, is the is what you create to handle problems that individuals can't solve separately, right? You, you need government to solve uh, abiding problems of social organization. So there is a macro security issue around the fact that we haven't developed an extensive teleportation network. And that is that those three types of organizations could do so and overwhelm us, overwhelm us with troops, somehow shut down our access to time space travel and so forth in the same way that you would you seize a military objective a military objective could be seized in time space not on the terrestrial plane on the micro level there's the need for the kind of nuanced approach that you're describing which is if i can teleport from my home to the grocery store i can teleport into a bank vault or into my neighbor's bedroom so we're going to have to find ways to check the uh, destination points, to block the destination points. And again, that, that would require government. So I'm not calling for everybody teleporting from their home teleport like the Jetsons you know, had spacecraft. Um, I'm talking about a government-administered transportation program like the commercial air passenger system, where the teleports would be at centralized locations, they would be under government authority, and the large, the large uh, teleport teleports would be at where airports are and they would be defended by uh, by armed guards in the same way that uh, you know Heathrow is uh, so I'm not talking about the willy-nilly development of this I'm talking about using this to make the technology of the 1970s obsolete and to implement more efficient transport not to create a chaotic system where everybody would be able to 
teleport hey, into the and, wall and also the spy on their neighbors yeah. well you could convert the tsa into the teleportation um uh security agency and you wouldn't even have to change the do designs on the uniform well when <laughs> well when as as president i put all we need at airports which is dogs capable of sniffing out every form of contraband that you could take on an airliner um that we'd have the opportunity to do that because we could get rid of the tsa just put the sniffer dogs under the border patrol and actually maybe evolve the TSA into the teleportation security agency, protecting the teleports and not having all of us undress at the airport, which is ignominious enough. Mm. But being so passive that in a sense, we're being treated as we deserve because we're not getting on our hind legs here and say, wait a minute, our fathers, our grandfather's generation developed secret technologies. Let's implement them. We paid for them. You know, that was the argument that Dr. Or that uh, Governor Jesse Ventura made with me uh, when I filmed his show, which is going to be seen in the States on um, next Wednesday on uh, on November uh, 21st. That'd be on True TV? Right, on True TV. I'm, I, I'm, I'm appearing in, in his time travel cover-up segment on, on, on conspiracy theory with, with Jesse Ventura. He said to me, you know, I think you want this technology out because you were involved in its development with your dad, and it's, it's obviously it was a major part of your childhood. I want these technologies known about and then used because I'm something called a taxpayer. I mean, what the hell have we been doing giving the U.S. defense technical community trillions of dollars over 65 years for them to develop, uh, in this case, a transportation technology that could be several order of magnitude more efficient in terms of time, energy, environmental effect, convenience, public health, public safety, only to keep it secret for 65 years? That's no kind of good society. That's not any vision of a good society. The American people, for example, have to work until May to make their own money after paying their federal and state and local taxes. Well, if their money is then going to technical boondoggles that are only boondoggles in the sense that the technologies aren't being socially applied to improve human society, that's basically an oppressive, dystopian reality that we're living in, where the fruits of our tax dollars are kept back from us that aren't made, that aren't used to make our lives safer, more efficient, less costly, more environmentally benign, more medically safe. So I'm speaking out because the people have an interest in utilizing this technology to be advantaged in the 21st century. You know, I want to teleport from Seattle to London, so I can then maybe take an electric car or bus up from from Heathrow or, or Gatwick up to Cambridge to meet with one of my props from Cambridge. I, I should have had the ability to do that if this technology had been implemented in 1970. I should have been able to teleport to Cambridge. Well, hold on. And if we come to break again, we've got two more segments left, ladies and gentlemen. If you are listening, then please jump on your Facebook, jump on whatever social media you've got and tell people to listen into the live streams at AmericanFreedomRadio.com and the chat room at the TheVinnieEastwoodShow.com. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with Andy Bashago. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337-531 to order your copy now. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, 
and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Show.com. No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel? Where warm-hearted humour and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments and suggestions of guests. Vinnie is building a hub to connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video, and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously, or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the VinnieEastwoodShow.com and click donate. Ladies and gentlemen to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. You can even listen on your iPhone if you go to AmericanFreedomRadio.com, download the app. We have uh, apps for Android as well, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, people are able to now have the uh, the little USB ports in your car, so you can plug your iPhone into that, tune in American Freedom Radio um, with the app, and you can listen to AmericanFreedomRadio.com and the Vinnie Eastwood Show while you're driving around live. How about them apples? My very special guest, Andy Bashago, uh, going to be running for uh, President of the United States. So, so um, Andy, are you going to be uh, running for as an independent or an interdimensional? Actually, both, Vinny. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm going to be petitioning to get on every state ballot in all the 50 states, and I'm going to talk about in cities like New York, London, Tokyo, Beijing, Moscow, uh, Stockholm. Um, so that was, it was very significant that that be undertaken. But the point I make is, look, Al Gore went on to become one of the most prominent statesmen of his generation in the United States. He reached the vice presidency, and then after the vice presidency, when he launched his international crusade regarding global warming, he was a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize and an Academy Award and even a Grammy. I mean, he became a celebrated figure in his generation. But the truth of the situation, I'm not faulting Al Gore, but but the, the reality of the situation is at the time that he was first being educated about the greenhouse effect at Harvard, what was secretly emerging in America's atomic research labs was the principal technology to reverse global warming. Why do I say that teleportation is the most significant environmental cause of our time? In other words, declassifying and deploying teleportation is so important to the environmental. Was sitting in Roger Ravel's class at Harvard College when Ravel was trying to inculcate the next generation with concern about what was then called the greenhouse effect, which today we would call global warming, climate change, what have you. Andrew Marshall had already written his secret report for the Pentagon indicating that enough uh, global warming could pitch us into the coming global superstorm of Strieber and Bell, basically a scenario where there would be so much melting that we might have a new ice age. Now, the last ice age, the, the, the glaciers came down to the southern Kansas border on the continental United States. Imagine the destruction that would be done during that reglaciation to countries like, well, the Scandinavian countries, the United Kingdom, Russia, China, Japan, the North Canada, the Northern United States. It would be devastating because that's where a lot of our, our technical and uh, academic resources are based in movement and environment, our environmental concerns. Well. 60% of greenhouse gases come from transportation. 
If we could introduce Tesla teleportation first between major world cities, using them to replace commercial airliners, and then begin filling in the rest of our transportation grid with teleportation. So you can go not just go from Sydney to Auckland in 10 seconds rather than 24 hours, but you can literally go from your home to the grocery store via teleportation, essentially obviating the need for the internal combustion engine. Well, Whatever. the internal combustion engine has been obsolete for a very long time. There's, there's currently no need for it, but the uh, main principle behind its uh, continued existence in manufacture, I believe, is because the Rockefellers own uh, a large chunk of the oil cartels and they don't want their, their uh, people's dependence on them to disappear. Right, and, and we are either going to break that lock on, on the, my interdimensional experiences. I'm not an interdimensional, I'm actually just an ethnic kid from Morris Plains, New Jersey. But along the way, I've had some interesting life experiences. And I think to the extent that I was time traveling to the United States government and people as a child, I think in maturity, I think I'm certainly qualified to be chief executive. But I'm not gonna pull any punches. I'm gonna talk openly about my time travel experiences so that I can use my presidential campaign as a vehicle for bringing this information forward. Mm. Um, so I'm not, I'm not going to, well, I'm going to be discussing an entire platform, but I'm going to make U.S. leadership in declassifying, declassifying and deploying our secret teleportation capability as, as the, the leading piece of my new energy platform. So... Getting back to what we were talking about before, you wanted to wrap up a um, an Al Gore anecdote of yourself. Yeah, I mean, just just to put this in perspective, Al Gore in 1970 